When you think of the Giants, you think of New York. But the heart and the soul of Big Blue's universe is a town you've never heard of. It's here in Jersey, just down the road from the stadium. It's got a funny name and a chip on its shoulder. Everybody pronounces the name wrong. It's Moon Hockey, it's not Moon Hockey. When it comes to Moon Hockey, everybody's humble, everybody's close-knit, everybody helps each other. It's a good, hard-working, dedicated town. Very fiercely uh, proud of their Moon Hockey heritage. This is true small-town USA, and right in our backyard, a pro football team. I could walk to the stadium from my house. It's a sense of pride for all of us. You know, Giants, that's your team. And to Beckham, and Beckham will run around the defense for a touchdown. There's nothing like watching football on a Sunday with our fellow Giant fans. We're all volunteers. We all have normal jobs. Giants games are on every week. It's a time for us to all come together whether it's six of us or 60. It's a lot of fun just seeing everyone, you know, everybody's together. We're there for the Giants. Moonaki will always stand by them. The hell with New York. Where you're from makes you who you are. For the Giants, that used to be New York. They played in the greatest city in the world. And in the 50s, they moved into the greatest stadium in the world. When I was in high school, they were playing at Yankee Stadium. When I walked out, it's like, what is this? Yankee Stadium, it's New York's home of champions. It's like you're on a different planet. It's a, it was a very, very special time. It had a certain aura uh, that, uh, you know, was kind of special. All the history. Babe Ruth and the facade. It's kind of a magical place. The Yankee mystique rubbed off on the Giants. They won an NFL championship in 1956, their first year in Yankee Stadium, and went to five title games in the next seven seasons. On Sunday afternoon, uh, it was the place to be. Guys were all dressed up in suits and ties. The ladies all wore mink coats, a lot of show business people. It was a showcase. We get on the subway and go down to 52nd Street, a very elegant place called the 21 Club, which is still there. The Giants are definitely old school in New York. The two fit together. You can't have one without the other almost like a great martini in the marriage of gin and vermouth. We still stand by class and sophistication. The Giants and Frank Gibbert had polish. To this day, Frank's helmet hangs above table 21, which always will be the Frank Gifford table. The Giants were kings in New York and enjoyed everything their realm had to offer. Here's Frank Gifford, all pro halfback. Hey, Joe, are you still using that greasy kid stuff on your hair? What else? Vitalis, that's what else. Being in New York City, endorsements come in through the window, and that's what happened with these players. They tied them up. I was making much more money doing that than I was playing football. <laughs> the LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Hi, I'm Frank Gifford for Lucky Strike. The Giants' kingdom went up in smoke when Frank Gifford and the rest of the team's stars retired. In 1964, New York began a playoff drought that would last 17 years and include only two winning seasons. Yankee Stadium was fine for the 50s, but by the 70s, football had become America's number one sport. And in a baseball stadium, the Giants would always get second billing. Our deal at Yankee Stadium was not a good deal. The Yankees owned the place. They were getting the ticket money, they were getting the parking money, we were getting very little money. So the giant brass decided, if we can get out of here, let's find a place. While New York City was willing to renovate Yankee Stadium, the Giants wanted to build a home of their own. 
and they took an offer from an unexpected place. I'm very pleased to announce that today a lease was signed between the New York football giants and the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. Every family always dreams of the day they can move into their own house, get away from the in-laws. The Giants were leaving New York for New Jersey. Traffic aside, crossing the Hudson River is easy, but things get more complicated when you're a flagship NFL franchise. A stadium isn't built overnight. Where do you play until it's ready? Are you New York glamour or New Jersey grit? How do you win after so many years of losing? Woo! Woo! And what happens when the state you're in starts fighting with the state you're named after? Let Jersey finance the uh, ticket tape parade. It made me mad. There was no way to throw down the gauntlet to Jersey and expect this to go quiet into that good night. Rutsat was actually opened by Abe Rutt, also known as Royal Rutt, in 1928. We're known for our deep fried dogs, also known as Rippers. That's the best dog you're gonna have, brother. We're right by the Meadowlands. This is Big Blue Nation. Everybody comes in here on game day. Usually every first preseason game or opening day, we always try to go into Rutt's hut here. New Jersey, we like being the underdog. There's nothing simple in New Jersey. Traffic's hard. To get to where you're going's hard. Everything's hard. If you go to California, your exit is here. They put the name of where you go, Santa Barbara. Jersey, they'll put the sign up, and then like seven miles down the road, there'll be an arrow. And of course, you miss it, and you end up in Delaware. So it's a great Jersey thing. You know, it makes you tougher. It really does. Why do you stay in Jersey, man? Because these are great people with great strengths and character, fighting for every day, and I love that spirit. You watch Bruce Springsteen on stage three and a half hours, man. You know why? Because he's from Jersey, that's why. He was taught that work ethic. He couldn't find the exits either. Forget exits. New York couldn't stand the Giants crossing to our side of the GW Bridge. The departure of the Giants makes no sense. Their fans are here, their home is here, their history is here, and they leave to take up tenancy amid acres of cattails. For generations, New Jerseyans have looked over this land and they've asked why. And this generation of New Jerseyans, they have asked why not. Going to the Meadowlands, a swamp, you know, building a stadium in a swamp, you know, how are you going to get there? The new stadium would be nearly the same distance from Times Square as Yankee Stadium was. But to New Yorkers, the mileage didn't matter. The Meadowlands couldn't possibly compare to Midtown. And New Jersey couldn't be anything but a punchline. If you're from New Jersey, you get the New Jersey jokes and you, uh... You smile maybe grimly. They have more toxic waste dumps than any other state. Jersey's the armpit of America? Oh. <laughs> New Jersey can't criticize New York. New York's got it all. For centuries, what New York hasn't mocked about New Jersey, it's claimed for its own. The Statue of Liberty is on our side of the Hudson River, but belongs to them. And while Frank Sinatra sang New York, New York, old blue eyes hailed from Hoboken, so when Jersey turned the tables and took the Giants, the loathing ran deep, especially for New York Mayor John Lindsay. It's gonna tarnish his reputation. He's gonna lose a major franchise to the state of New Jersey. The attitude of the Giants' management has been selfish, callous, and ungrateful. Mayor Lindsay at the time, I think, was, was pretty vindictive. They terminated our lease, threw us out of Yankee Stadium two games into the 73 season. Giant Stadium was beginning to take shape, but wouldn't be ready for several years. So the team moving from New York to New Jersey took a detour through another state altogether. 
We then ended up playing at the Yale Bowl in uh, 73 and 74, where I remember very clearly that we won a total of one game in those two years. I haven't been here since 74. Reminds me of those games, the smell and everything. It really hasn't changed that much. Still got the wooden benches. I can't believe they, the fans actually sat in wooden benches back. Now they would go crazy if they had to sit in a place like this. They would go nuts. In New Haven, Connecticut, the problem was attendance. There were about 10,000 empty seats in the bowl today. Our games up here were a two and a half hour drive for us. It was like every game was an away game. We had to get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> My name is Don Martini. I've been an avid Giant fan for probably close to 60 years. The family business is the deli in Blairstown, New Jersey. I get a lot of Giant fans who come a long ways just to see the stadium. It's only about 100 feet behind the, the deli. And they say, ooh, there's my seat. There's my seat. They can pick their seat out right in the stadium. I love to work with my hands, and I got this crazy idea of building this beautiful stadium. It's uh, 17 feet long, five and a half feet high, 65,000 seats. I've got about $10,000 invested in, in materials, almost two years, 10 hours a day, seven days a week. And I am crazy like that. Some people wouldn't do that, but that's what I like to do. This stadium, to me, it is the finest. It was just so wonderful. This is Giant Stadium. This is a brand new football stadium, a magnificent penthouse playpen for a cellar-dwelling organization, the Giants, in the swamps of New Jersey, a few miles from Times Square. When they untie the ribbon today, 78,000 fans will be able to root in comfort for a team that has had one winning season since 1963. When Giant Stadium opened, it was a statewide holiday. Go Giants! People from Munaki to Metuchen were proud of our new football palace and came to join the party. How long have you been here? Two o'clock this morning. Two o'clock this morning? Whatever for? Well, since we live here, it's a, it's a thrill. It's, I don't know, it's exciting just to be here. Any problems with traffic? None at all. I live right in Sea Caucus. Oh, you had it made, huh? Sea Caucus as well? That's right. What do you think of the new stadium? Fantastic. How? How is it good? <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting for a seat. <laughs> Fans traded martinis for Marlboros, and the helmet said Giants instead of NY. Welcome to Giants Stadium. The escalator immediately in front of you will take you to the upper level. Escalator the concrete was bright white. The AstroTurf was neon green, and the tunes came from Up With People. It was a state-of-the-art slice of 70s sports heaven, and it belonged to the Giants. But the team lost its first game there, and many more after that. When Giant Stadium was erected, it was like, oh my gosh, this is the, the Mecca, this is our sanctuary. And we kind of um, tarnished that sanctuary initially by being the doormat of the National Football League. An upset win as the Giants lead 17 to 12, and we're inside 30 seconds. The Eagles have no timeouts. Wait a minute, here's a free foot, I don't believe it! The Eagles pick it up, and Herman Edwards runs it in for a touchdown! And the Giant people are stunned, everybody in the stadium is stunned, and that development. We don't bring that Eagles really? game The up. reverse handoff. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that with the Eagles, Eagles game? Oh, talk about God. that. Yeah. 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 Just, just, it was just like they found new and exciting ways to, to lose. lose. I never heard the term so frequently and so, so passionately, you're a bum. Let's go, somebody. Open up some holes. That's what you get paid for, Steph. This is the only thing that makes the Giants worth coming to, because the team has been a generation of losers for 16 years. So this is what this is what it makes for it. Uh, tell me it's not the truth. Tell me it's not the truth, right? I remember the plane flying overhead with the banner. Uh, 
uh, I don't know how many years of lousy football we've had enough. Fans burning their tickets. 30 years I've been following them. 30 years spending money for the Maris to get rich. Wellington Mara. Mara right. Yeah, the owners. Looks like the ownership has to do make some changes. Uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that would be nice to see. The stadium was still new, but by 1979, the losing had gotten old, and owner Wellington Mara was as frustrated as the fans. Yeah, out of timeouts. It was a fourth and one play that we went for and didn't make it, and he he stomped on this wooden chair and it broke, and then he kept. Uh, stopping on it, and I mean, it broke into a million different pieces. I finally turned to him and I said, I, I think you got it, Dad. There's nothing left. Mara wanted to win, but he was still looking for the right guys to help him do it. Well, it's a, it's a great honor for me to, to become the head coach of the New York Giants, or New Jersey Giants. Uh, but uh, let's start over. <clears throat> start all over. What are we? New coach Ray Perkins didn't know the team name, and nobody knew the rookie quarterback from this small school. New York Giants first round selection. Quarterback Phil Sims, Moorhead State. People were saying, well, what is this team? They're not Bright Lights Big City anymore. They didn't seem to have an identity, and they desperately needed one. When you think of New Jersey, man, you think of concrete. That stadium it had toughness. It's just something strong in its foundation, built concrete, just, ah, uh, it just reeked that team. Giants Stadium was never about being pretty. It was a great home field for the Giants because they learned how to navigate the winds in that place when other teams couldn't. I had an advantage over everybody in Giants Stadium because of the wind. When I took the field, I knew I was going to play bad. The other quarterback hadn't figured it out yet. You felt a sense of pride being from the state and having that in your state. It was ours. Giant Stadium wouldn't truly feel like home until we had a winning team. The New York Giants first round selection, Lawrence Taylor, linebacker, North Carolina. Drafting Lawrence Taylor was a major step toward that goal. When he first started playing, the way he motivated the team. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. It was like a defibrillator for the team. <laughs> woo! Woo! He had that passion. I think that's what the, uh, the fans loved about him. LT, LT, LT. And I still have my Lawrence Taylor jersey. And when you go into the stadium, they'll see people wearing the LT jerseys. We got to rush them. We got to kick the rest. We're a bunch of bad summer Let's go! Nobody ever did what he did as a linebacker. With the speed that he had and the strength that he had, he was so dynamic. You always knew he was capable of doing something special. Like so. Superman. I remember sitting here at the firehouse watching the game and everybody be getting closer to the TV. As a rookie, LT helped the Giants make the playoffs for the first time in nearly 20 years. But our excitement was tempered by some unexpected news. After all these years, Bear Bryant is retiring as the coach of one of the most successful college football teams ever. And Ray Perkins, the coach of the New York Giants, is taking Bear's place at the University of Alabama. The new head coach of the Giants, Bill Parcells, currently the Giants' defensive coordinator. A native of New Jersey, it's a dream come true for Parcells. Uh, this was my team. I remember the old days. I used to go to the games when they were in the polo grounds. I would have done this for free. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a young boy, I lived just up the hill in a town called Hasbro Kites, and we'd be down in those marshes and swamps and running around. As a young boy, the New York football giants was my hometown team. I lived and died with them. Well, they had built a stadium right there where I used to fool around, and for me, it was it was really a dream come true. It really was. Somebody described you once as a Jersey guy. What do you think that means? 
If somebody says that, you oh, know, Bill Parcells, he's a real Jersey, Jersey guy. He was fortunate enough to get out of Philadelphia. <laughs> Billy, make sure you remind him. They might try something big early. Yeah. I okay? Last time I told you guys that, you forgot to remember. Remember? He noticed that Jersey accent quite a bit. Yeah. And then he would start talking about the deli, you know, where he would stop at the deli in the morning. Yeah, he used to come here every day, 5.30 in the morning, come in, get his coffee or donut, probably donuts, you know. <laughs> I never like to go straight to work. Stopping for your coffee, you know, you see people, you see your neighborhood people. There's a little chit-chat always. And then I would stop at Manny's after work. Parcells was always here. Him and my father really became tight. They became really, really good, good, good friends. We didn't talk about football, that's for sure. Because he didn't like it. He liked to come here and relax. Mmm. You know, Mike, I used to eat here at Manny's after every home game when I coached the Giants, and Manny's is as good as it gets. You're right, it doesn't get any better than Manny's chicken franchise. You tried the veal parmesan? No way, I never had the veal. You say I the always have the chicken. The I always have, have the, the chicken. Veal. I always have the chicken. How can you say that? I'm out of here. Manny, where's the chicken? The veal's way better than the Manny. chicken. Manny! Everybody knows that. We would offer to him, you know, we could bring in through the kitchen or bring in through the side door because it would just be packed with people. And he was a creature of habit. He says, I come in this way every time, I'm gonna come in the same way every single time. I think he liked the applause too when yeah. he walked in the door. People, every Everybody stood up. You know, give him a high five or whatever it was as he was walking by. He was always gracious to all the fans here. He used to tell me all about Bischoff's. Oh, you got the best ice cream here. I like rum raisin. That's one of my favorites. As you can tell from looking at me, I, I, have, a, I have a pretty good interest in that. The ultimate Jersey guy knew how to get to all the best places. He took the team that always made the wrong turn and filled it with players who'd followed him to the right exits. He'd always walk around and he goes, I got too many California guys. I can't run with California guys. I got to get me some Jersey guys. A Jersey guy will play football on Sundays for nothing in the Paramus Mall parking lot. Don't worry about doing everything perfect now. Just get out there and run like hell and catch it, all right? All right. You know what I mean? Like a street game. A Jersey guy would be opinionated, a little abrupt. Some of these guys got to get their head out of their ass around here. Definitely not too sensitive. Get your fat ass off Shut the up, field. Sims. Now, don't be a damn no-class hey. player. I think the players, I don't know whether the word adjusted to my personality, but certainly knew about it. And quite frankly, some of my very best players had the same kind of personality, the Simses and Taylors. Hey, Sula, you better hope I never get back in there. I will kick your and the Birch and Banks. These guys were fiery guys. Tough, no nonsense, not very flashy guys. We were also very physical and we did. We, we kicked a lot of ass. Nothing. I'm getting chills right now when Pat Summerall would do the lineups at the beginning of the game. Benson Ard, Oates, Godfrey, Nelson, and the tight end, Mark Bavaro. You knew it was smashing time. Guys, they're fighters, and our NFL franchise is showing some progress here, but we've still got a lot to do. That tough nose, not going to take anything from anybody, going to leave it all out on the field style of play made New Jerseyans fall in love with the team. They reflected how we all lived our lives. Even though I am a Southerner by birth, I think at heart, I am a native New Jerseyan. I've been here for almost 40 years. It is a garden state. I love to plant my hostas. You work and you put it in the ground and you'll see it'll come up almost instantly. So many giants call this home. Jim Burt lives a few miles from here. Phil Sims lives over the hill. Harry Carson lives over the hill. 
We've put down roots here. By the mid 80s, a new generation of giants had become our friends and neighbors. Oh! We rubbed elbows with them at the 7-Eleven owned by nose tackle Jim Burt. The car dealership owned by left tackle Brad Benson, or just out getting a bite to eat. My first experiences with diners, where you could get anything you want on the menu, it's, uh, it doesn't At matter. Any time, 24 hours Any time, that's right. I, I'm thinking, it's a great, great place. <laughs> it's a great place. What's the blue plate special? I was getting some breakfast, and the waitress comes up, do you want some coffee? And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> on your way to the stadium, you were stopping in the 7-Eleven. Thanks a lot. Good one. Thank you very much. You're right next to the guy pouring coffee, and you're just striking up a conversation. You go to work, he goes to work. I would work out with these guys. There's massive Harry Carson banging out 450 pounds. Me, I'm like a little pipsqueak working out, you know? If you are a family man, Jersey is absolutely conducive to that. What time school? Hmm? For the players actually to live here, we had some bragging rights. We had some really uh, 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 honest to goodness, uh, you can't argue with bragging rights because the Giants are in New Jersey. The Giants made their homes in Jersey. And when the nation tuned into a big game, there was no mistaking what state they played in. And off Morris, and here he is again, this time in the Redskin territory. The other teams came in and wondered, why is this thing red? And it says Meadowlands. It says nothing about Giants. But for us, it, it, it just became part of us. That's who we were. So we were very comfortable playing on that big red logo in the middle of the field. We're in New Jersey. We're the Meadowlands. You know, it's not New York. And uh, that's just overt pride uh, coming from New Jerseyans. And you got to respect that. In 1986, the Giants put their stamp on the NFL, storming to a 14-2 record. By Phil McConkey in the back corner. Elway is looking for a target, goes out to the right side, intercepted. George Martin. We had a date with some California guys in our first playoff game. We're like guys from Jersey. We have we drink beer out of cans, you know, and it's Budweiser, and we don't have cheerleaders and we don't have fancy stuff. We just know how to go down and make guys like Joe Montana feel sick. <laughs> Sam is looking for a target. Sam's end zone. Touchdown, Bavaro! For the first time, the road to the Super Bowl would run through exit 16W. Across the river, Mayor Ed Koch closed his roads to the Giants. A team with New York in its name was two wins away from a world championship. Yet weeks before the Super Bowl, Koch's message was clear. If you have a victory parade, Hold it somewhere else. I don't think uh, that New Yorkers want to take hard-earned taxpayers' money, more than $500,000, and spend it on a foreign team. I was press secretary to Mayor Koch. When the Giants left, he took great offense at that. Now, I applaud this foreign team. This foreign team <laughs> used to have on, their, on the side of their helmets, uh, NY. Do you remember that? They took it off. They left us, and they must be punished. If you weren't a New Yorker, as far as Koch was concerned, you know, you were a subspecies. Mayor Koch was just like he thumbed his nose. It was like New Jersey wasn't good enough. It made me mad. That's all I can say. He turned it into a spectacle for himself. I always felt like something was taken from my players that could have been uh, an interesting experience and, and certainly very memorable. I don't like it when politicians get into the aspect of sports. To not have that happen for those guys, I, I just, I didn't really have a very, what you would call favorable attitude toward, <laughs> toward those things. Jersey is Jersey, New York is New York. Let Governor Kane finance the uh, ticket tape parade in Menachee. Mnuchin, was it? <laughs> he used to pronounce it in a very funny way. And he realized that the name Minucci, however it was mispronounced, uh, got a laugh every time. Most people did not know what Menachi was. 
they probably thought it was part of Monopoly or something. We had TV cameras here for a whole week interviewing us, all because of that statement. The mayor of a small New Jersey village near the stadium suggested the Giants opt for Munaki over Manhattan. There's an office building down on the corner of Munaki Avenue and Munaki Road that's about uh, 45 to 50 feet high. I think we could do as good a job at anything here in New Jersey as can be done across the river. Koch fanned the flames, God rest his soul. God, he fanned the flames. So, you know, there was no way that, you know, you throw down the gauntlet to somebody from New Jersey and expect this to uh, go quiet into that good night. No. We're picking it up, and we're going to smack you in the face with it. And that's what we did. Well, the, uh, the mayor of Munaki offered uh, to the Giants that we would have a uh, parade for them here in town. And uh, the fire department picked up on that. And uh, with the 13 towns in our mutual aid system, uh, everybody's more than enthusiastic to, uh, to help give a ticket tape parade, New Jersey style, for the Giants. We would have men go up to the top, and we would be feeding them with confetti. And as the Giants are passing underneath, we will be throwing the confetti down to them. And as you can see, this will be just as effective as any ticket tape parade that New York City or any other city throughout the United States can give. There was no way we were going to let that pass without doing something and showing our pride for the Giants. I don't believe that. I, I don't think it should be either. called the New Jersey Where's Giants. Their stadium? They play here, they pay their taxes here, they might as well be called the New Jersey Giants. <laughs> Good point. A lot of time. A lot of time. While Munaki planned for a party, the Giants had to take care of business down the road. They'd last won a championship on Yankee Stadium's hollowed ground. To win another, they'd have to do it on a splotchy field of neon green, the wind whipping with anticipation. 30 years of waiting for that day to win a championship of any kind. People have been waiting forever. Any little spark just set them afire in the stands, and it was a lot of fun. When the Giants won the coin toss, head coach Bill Parcells put his trust in the team's tempest of a home. We took the win. He wanted to be downwind, score first, and put the pressure on the other team, and that's what we did. Takes the hand off to Russo. Sam is looking at zone. He's going to run. Lobs it. Complete touchdown. Lionel Manuel. With the wind at their backs, the Giants jumped out to a 17-point lead, putting the Washington Redskins in an impossible situation. The Giants were going to their first Super Bowl. Their send-off wasn't pretty. It was Jersey. Confetti or debris or clippings or whatever it is. That's their parade. People started tearing up programs, whatever they had, and let it go. And it was like snow. After all those years of despair, the wind blowing the confetti around the stadium, it's an image that I'll have with me for the rest of my life. Yes! Put it up in the stand. Yeah, he was up there with the fans. He climbed up in the stand. They were there through the thick and the thin, and it was a lot of thin. And um, they stuck with us, and they deserved it. We were that close to the fans. We were that much a part of the community. A player now to go into the stands and really embrace the fan. Is it an arm's length or is it a full embrace? That era was a complete full embrace. It had been a while since the Giants played in an ancient college stadium. The stakes were a little higher than at the Yale Bowl. And though it was California, it would feel more like home. New Jersey was there. I mean, you could tell in the crowd. Let's go Giants! And how they all got to California, or how they all got tickets, but the Jersey guys were in those stands. Anybody that had any possibility of getting out there from this area went out there. No matter what they had to do to get there, they got there.
It's amazing the number of people I've met. I was going on my honeymoon and I canceled it. You know, all the stories, they're great. That's how much it meant to all the people in the state. Giant fans got what they came to see. The team exploded for 30 second half points. It was one of the most dominant performances in Super Bowl history, and it was felt all the way back home. At Manning's Restaurant, the hot hangout for Giants fans, it was a sellout crowd. The Giants were in especially top form during the second half, as the team rushed yard after yard to its 39-20 finish. Doug Ramsey, NBC News, in Munaki, New Jersey. Awesome. Gives me chicken skin just thinking about it now, you know. I went back to those planes flying overhead, those people burning the tickets, vindication. We went from that to world champions. What this is is a blood kinship that was formed 20 some odd years ago and it's never gonna die. The rest of your life, the rest of your life, I'm man, sick. nobody could ever tell you that you couldn't do it, because you right. did it. Yeah. Owner Wellington Mara had done it, too. The move to New Jersey didn't cost the Giants a state. It would help them build an empire. To Mara, there was no more fitting a place to celebrate than where his vision rose out of the swamp a decade earlier. The bigger story, the Giants have arrived! Joe, will you MC it? What, you want me to MC? Yeah. And here to I called the New York Giants the Jersey Giants. They loved that. The fans loved that. Just absolutely loved that. Should it be the New York Giants or the New Jersey Giants? How do you feel about that? I think it should be the New Jersey Giants. You want to stay up? Most of the fans are from uh, New Jersey. We're in New Jersey. We had our celebration here. We don't need Koch. Let us stay home. Let us go to Poland, Russia, where we want to go. Well, Koch was in Poland, so I was acting mayor. I went out there to represent the city. The rivalry between New York and New Jersey became apparent when the president of New York City Council was introduced. New York! Oh, New Jersey! I get up there in good faith, and they're going, boo! <laughs> we love you! We love the Giants! We're all from the same region, and we support you! God bless you! It's not fun to be booed by thousands of New Jerseyans, you know? The Giants are the first world champions from the state of New Jersey, and we couldn't be prouder. It was New Jersey celebrating New Jersey. We can do it. If we can do it, we can do anything. We can take on New York, we can take on anybody. We can win New Jersey. <laughs> These players on the Giants have a special name for this place. When we come out of that tunnel every Sunday, they refer to this as our house. And you're our family. And right now, to thank you, I have a little something to show you. And that was it. There was no last minute parade in Manhattan or Munaki. That would have been big. Quite a bit. Uh, yeah, that that would have been, been probably one of the biggest things that the, the town uh, uh, could have done. Oh, it would have been great. It would have been great. Everybody would have had such a good time. It would have been something for the ages around here. Here's Bill. Now, now we can start. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you everybody for coming. Let's raise a glass. Here's to good friends. Here's to good times. And here's to Giants football. Hoo -ah. Years since we're supposed to be doing this. Who are those guys? What's up, guys? What's happening? Are those guys? Whoa! Bear Cox here anywhere? <laughs> oh! I understand it's been 28 years. 30. 30 years. Okay. I'm done. I can die now. <laughs> we're going for a ride. Oh, we're going for a ride. That's the very first selfie I ever took. At long last, the Giants have made it to Munaki. 
technically we get to tell them this is a false alarm, right? <laughs> and yet, it's like they were home all along, watching the game with friends and neighbors. Now it's dropped from behind, and Sack Ball is out. Ah. After all, they're like us. They're Jersey guys. Pleasure to meet you. Well, I know this is very Italian, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I kiss the ring. I, I'm not the Pope. Who are these guys? The next? There you go. Thank you. I don't believe yeah. this. Hang on, hang on. I got to open the door. I got to open the door. Oh my God, that's it. Hey, how you doing? All right, how are you? Thanks for stopping over. Didn't you used to be Harry Carson? <laughs> I would have loved to have hanged with you back in the day, dog. Oh, no, man. You would have never got to be chief. <laughs> there was no difference between them and anyone else here today. They're our team. Come on, we do better than They can call themselves the New York Giants. I, I, I want everybody to put their hand on the trophy. Oh. To us, they're the Jersey Giants. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody belongs to this thing.